federal government will invest in research, treatment and support services for teenagers with anorexia nervosa. The move announced today has been welcomed by the father of Olivia Evans, who died of the condition last month at the age of 15, and he's been campaigning for change. Rob Evans joins us now. Rob, thank you so much for being with us. So uh, this package is worth $70 million. What difference is it going to make? Well, I think uh, any more attention and focus that we can get in the area of eating disorders, it's got to be um, a, a help. I mean, um, I think if we just throw money at the problem, it doesn't necessarily solve it. So I think funding is one thing. But then I think we need to make sure that the funding is used very effectively because there are certain treatments that probably wouldn't have made any impact to my daughter. Mm. Um, so I think there needs to be a lot more more research, I guess, in the areas that do work better um, so that we can better support our, our young people. Can you tell us about Olivia, Rob, and what happened to her? Yeah, sure. I guess, look, what started as looking like a just a, a young girl being fussy with, with eating at the age of around 13, it, uh, it manifested um, fairly quickly into more restrictive eating and then turned into about 12 months later a terminal case of anorexia and we were we were battling so hard to um you know with the professionals to find the appropriate treatment uh, for her but unfortunately her her body and mind gave out i mean the the process it's kind of a, a revolving door uh, that the mainly the girls seemed to to go through and unfortunately we each time she would come out of hospital, she was a little bit worse and trying to get those breakthroughs in her, her mindset to want to be motivated to make some change mm. was just so difficult and ultimately ended up in, in her life ending, as you mentioned, um, about four weeks ago. Yeah, so sorry to hear that, Rob. Um, did you identify a trigger that caused her eating disorder? Yes, and un unfortunately, it's one we hear here all too commonly. Um, she was bullied. Um, unfortunately, society doesn't seem to cope with people that are a little bit different. And, and Olivia was a, a little different to most kids her age. And that made her a, a target. And of course, that meant that she didn't really fit in. She did struggle to make uh, strong friendships. And unfortunately, uh, that that bullying manifested itself into the eating disorder which she wasn't able to talk about at the time and it's only probably about six months ago that she was really able to articulate it to me as to to what happened um you know you, one of your previous stories you mentioned about uh, autism and she was also through this process diagnosed as being on the spectrum mm. as well so i think if we had all the information at the beginning perhaps the treatment would look a little bit different uh, but it's just it's such a difficult illness to identify as a problem to start with and then um, you know the different pathways to helping our our young children get through it in that those such precious ages between 13 to 16 it, it's so difficult and there, there's no there's not one simple solution to fix it i think it's a combination of things starting with in school about body image and self-image and resilience and and so forth so are there two big things that are going on here rob then there's not enough understanding of both the causes and the treatments of the condition that there really isn't enough known about the complexity of anorexia and other eating disorders yeah i think you've probably articulated that very well there i think one of the you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday about how um, I've been blamed for her illness because I, I work in the health and fitness industry and by more than one person. And um, one of the problems with the, the eating disorder is there can be people watching this right now and say, oh, we feel sorry for you, but it's not like it's cancer. And to be honest, the solution's simple. The kids just have to eat, but we don't understand just how insidious it is unless you, you know, you live in our shoes as a parent trying to feed your child and trying to break through these barriers to, you know, make some, make some progress. So I think absolutely understanding it more and awareness, um, you know, of it to make sure that people can comprehend it. And then I think we need more of a, a solution-based thinking type approach to it rather than just, okay, we've got funding to use here, let's just put it in the same old resources when we know that that's 
that's really failing uh, some of our kids and ultimately failed my daughter. Mm. 